watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. And by viewers like you. I'm Gary Gazark with this week's Israel Update. Israel and Iran, bitter enemies, have in recent days both moved warships to the Red Sea. Israel, in response to intelligence signaling an imminent terror attack in the south, moved two warships to the Red Sea port of Eilat. Israel has already reinforced its troop numbers and deployed other ships along its border with Egypt, in part responding to a terror attack that took the lives of eight Israelis on August 18th. According to the AP, Israel's home front minister, Matan Vilnai, said a team of 10 Islamic Jihad terrorists was already in Sinai waiting to strike. Vilnai told reporters, quote, the Palestinian Islamic Jihad wants to carry out a terror attack along the Egyptian border, unquote. The Egyptian border is absolutely porous. We have known this for many years. At the same time, Iran's government press agency said the Islamic Republic will also deploy naval forces in the area. The Iranian 15th Fleet, which includes a submarine and warships. The Iranian ships will patrol near the Gulf of Aden, located near the mouth of the Red Sea adjacent to Somalia. The Iranian government said it is deploying the ships to, quote, convey the message of peace and friendship to all countries, unquote. Over 50 years ago, Zev Jabotinsky, founder of Revisionist Zionism in opposition to David Ben-Gurion and the Jewish Agency, formulated his theory of the Iron Wall, which held that Israel would have to establish and sustain itself by military force, an Iron Wall in the face of Arab terrorism. Today, it seems Jabotinsky was prescient, except that his Iron Wall has become today's Iron Dome. The Israeli designed and developed missile defense system, which detects, intercepts, and destroys enemy missiles and mortar shells, came into its own during the recent terrorist attacks on Israel's south. Batteries were deployed outside the cities of Ashkelon and Be'er Sheva, the major population centers closest to the Gaza border. While the system met with mixed results, Many experts believe that this was due to inadequate deployment to the Iron Dome and the inherent problems of working with a new weapon, especially one that uses the kind of sophisticated computer software that Iron Dome uses. Indeed, it appears that in those places where the system was deployed and operated properly, it performed fairly well, intercepting several dozen rockets aimed at major urban areas. In fact, recent reports have indicated that Gaza terrorist groups were forced to adjust their tactics in an attempt to contend with the new defense system. Now it appears that the Israeli defense establishment has officially committed itself to Iron Dome. A third system was deployed in the southern port city of Ashdod, and Defense Minister Barak promised that six more would be deployed by 2012. He went on to praise Iron Dome as Quote, something that completely changes the way we protect our citizens, who still need standard shelters, but will also increase the government's operational freedom in the future, unquote. Whether this will prove to be the case remains an unanswered question. While the system performed well during the recent rocket attacks, it did not prove to be a decisive factor. And it is expensive. Besides the high cost of building and deploying the system, the interceptor rockets it uses to destroy enemy missiles cost around $50,000 a piece, and two must be fired at any given target. Nonetheless, if the system can be made to work, it would be a major coup for the IDF that would be, in, in effect, the world's first practical missile defense system and would severely hamper the ability of Israel's enemies to threaten its major population centers with long-range rockets. 
IDF is now training Israeli settlers of possible mass disorder, which might occur in September after a UN vote ratifying Palestinian statehood. As part of this training, the IDF is providing settlers with tear gas and stun grenades to prepare for it being called Operation Summer Seeds. The IDF has conducted detailed work to determine a red line for each settlement in the West Bank, which will determine when soldiers will be ordered to shoot at the feet of Palestinian protesters if the line is crossed. According to a document acquired by Haaretz, the main working assumption of the defense establishment is that a Palestinian declaration of independence will cause a public Palestinian uprising, which will mainly include mass disorder. The document states that this order will include, quote, marches toward main junctions, Israeli communities, and education centers, as well as efforts at damaging official symbols of the Israeli government, unquote. The Jerusalem Post has fired senior reporter Larry Derfner after he wrote a column in his online blog in which he justified Palestinian attacks, which takes the lives of Israeli civilians. Defner's piece, entitled The Awful Necessary Truth About Palestinian Terror, evoked a firestorm of controversy in Israel for appearing to justify the recent terrorist attack near Eilat, which left eight Israelis dead. Defner later deleted the piece from his blog. Another Jerusalem Post columnist, Izzy Leibler, who is a frequent guest on Shalom TV, wrote a scathing critique of Derfner's article, which Leibler entitled Justifying Murder and Abomination, in which he quoted Derfner blog, Palestinian terrorism in the face of rejectionist Israeli government is justified even to kill Israelis. Leibler then concluded, for an Israeli Jew professionally employed by the only Israeli English language newspaper to justify the barbaric murder of his own brothers and sisters in a public website is unforgivable. The Jerusalem Post quoted Derfner as saying, Whoever the Palestinians were who killed the eight Israelis near Eilat last week, however, while the ideology was there were justified to attack. What's needed very badly, Derfner continued, is for Israelis to realize that the occupation is hurting the Palestinians terribly, that it's driving them to try to kill us, that we are compelling them to engage in terrorism, and that it's up to us to stop provoking our own people's murder by ending the occupation. Later, Derfner apologized for the post, saying he meant that the Israeli occupation provokes Palestinian terrorism, not that it justifies it, saying... I meant to shock Israelis and friends of Israel into seeing how badly we're hurting the Palestinians by denying them independence. It's so bad that it's helping drive them to try to kill us. Apparently, that apology was insufficient for the Jerusalem Post. Derfner posted a note on his blog saying the Jerusalem Post had fired him after receiving hundreds of subscription cancellations. For Shalom TV, I'm Gary Gozark with this week's Israel Update. Uh. На ложку дрожжей 